If Nick chose me, he would lose his family. And if he chose his family, he might spend the rest of his life resenting you. You nasty, you got a nasty, you got nastier. You know, I couldn't decide which one I like more, the title of this movie or the film itself. They're both pretty good. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Crazy Rich Asians. I really do appreciate it. Now, Crazy Rich Asians is about some Asians. Um, it's directed by John M. Chu. If you're not too familiar with his work, he did a couple of the Justin Bieber movies. Uh, he also did G.I. Joe Retaliation with The Rock, and I'm not a big fan of that. And also, Now You See Me Too, and a number of the Step Up movies from back in the day. So um, I did not know who directed this going into the movie. But when I saw the name after when the credits said, I was like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. And what the film is about is two characters. They're a loving couple by the name of Rachel and Nick. Um, they've been dating for about a year. And Nick wants to take things to the next level. He is serious about this girl. He likes her a lot. He loves her a lot. And he wants to introduce his girlfriend, Rachel, to his parents. But little does Rachel know that Nick's parents and his whole family is rich. And they're just not regular rich. They're not new money rich. They are like old school, crazy, we rule empires rich. I mean, billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. It's just freaking insane. Now, the first thing that I liked about this movie is just like the sense of culture. You can imagine that, you know, they're in the States and they have to fly overseas. Uh, for Rachel to meet Nick's parents and immediately when you get overseas I've um, I, I th you know they go around all parts of parts of Asia uh, mainly Singapore and uh, the, what I just really liked about the movie is the sense of culture that you got when you were going around town over in Singapore and China and just other parts of Asia. I mean, it was just beautiful. There was scenery that I've never seen before. Um, I also liked that in the background you had a soundtrack. It was in Chinese. It was in uh, not Cantonese, but Mandarin. And I had no idea what they were saying, what the lady was singing, but it was beautiful. And, um, you know, I, it's not anything that I would say I would buy on soundtrack or whatever, but, you know, for being in a Chinese language and me still not knowing at all what they're saying at all, I still enjoyed it a, a good amount. Um, something else that I really did like about this film is just, it's just freaking hilarious. I mean, there were some points in this where I was just laughing out loud. Uh, one of the uh, supporting characters in this movie is the YouTuber by the name of Aquafina. I'm not too familiar with her work, but uh, she also popped up in the film earlier this year, Ocean's 8, and she was great in this, but in my opinion, she was even greater in Crazy Rich Asians. Um, there were no forced jokes from her or the rest of the cast at all within the script. Uh, she's just like a natural naturally funny person and um, you know she did a great job you know bringing that to the front of the screen just you know to make you laugh out loud over and over and over again and um, it's just like I said just not her just the entire film is just very very funny um, you know it's, it's kind of difficult not to like there's really nothing to complain about other than just to kind of few little nitpicks here and there uh, for example there is a subplot or a side story uh, with um, Nick's, I guess it's his sister-in-law and it just had nothing to do with the rest of the film. I mean, I was kind of waiting for it to circle back around and connect to the main cast, but it just never did that and kind of came across as filler. And that just kind of seemed unnecessary because the film is two hours, like right at two hours. And if you cut these scenes out, you know, it could have been uh, cut down to about an hour and 50 minutes, uh, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. You know, I'm not saying that the movie is too long, but when you are making a film, you know, I imagine that uh, you will want it to be as short as possible, you know, because most people do like short movies. Um, the, also, is just something interesting to me is um, this um, film is 100 percent you know an asian cast there's not like one black person one white person one hispanic person in the whole entire ca no actually i i was wrong no the, there is um at the very beginning there's a couple of white people sprinkled sprinkled in at the very beginning and not that that matters to me but i you know i i just had to bring it up because I kind of feel silly uh, for saying this, what I'm about to say, but I'm just going to be honest with you. This is the first movie that I've seen in my entire life with a predominantly Asian cast that wasn't a martial arts film. I mean, that's just what it is. Um, not my fault, but 
I mean, that's just what it is. I'm a big martial arts fan. I, you know, downstairs, I have two shelf cases of nothing but, you know, Asian foreign martial arts films and things like that. You know, whether it's from, uh, you know, India or Korea, Chinese, Japan, you know, whatever. And uh, for example, you know, you have Michelle Yeoh um, in this film. Uh, she's Nick's mother and she's kind of uh, like the leader of everything. And I'm a big fan of her, you know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and this film and that film. And uh, she's a great martial artist, you know, but it was just kind of a breath of fresh air just to kind of see, um, you know, a predominantly Asian film and get a sense of their culture and not have to do with anything with martial arts. And, you know, the Asians in this movie were pretty cool. Not the ones that beat us in the beauty supply store or hit us with brooms uh, over a five dollar eyebrow job. Um, but the ones in this movie, you know, I thought that was great. Uh, I was laughing my butt off. And, um, you know, just something that really just stood out to me was Michelle Yeoh's performance. I'm not saying that it's Oscar worthy or anything like that. But um, you got a good parallel between American culture and their culture over there in uh, China or Singapore. While over in America, you know, we're driven to go off of our passion and follow our dreams and things like that. But over there to Mich Michelle Yeoh's character, um, she just finds that absolutely ridiculous and has a completely different philosophy. I don't want to tell you that here because it's worth you viewing in the movie. But even though um, it kind of made me turn my head like this when she was uh, putting her uh, uh, putting her point across. At the same time, I do respect her point of view and uh, kind of understand where she's coming from and the sacrifice that she made for herself and her family to strive you know in this world that we live in today uh, me as a black man uh, you know we deal with racism and there's like a little sprinkle of racism in this movie and I could relate to that and I just think you know it's ridiculous and you know we need to rid of that in our areas of activity um, but that's just a small part of the film but it is something that stood out to me um, I really did enjoy this film. Um, it's something that I can watch over and over and over again. Uh, but at the same time, I don't necessarily know that if I will buy it unless I just have money to blow. If I had to rate Crazy Rich Asians out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Crazy Rich Asians or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And um, I almost forgot about this. Just, um, you know, when I, I checked out a couple of other reviews and uh, I was talking to somebody on Facebook, you know who you are uh, in the inbox. And they were just saying like, you know, hey. Uh, you know, the movie is good, but it kind of has some of those uh, repeated romantic comedy tropes that we see over and over again. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that up until like the very end. The film did kind of have that predictable ending that I just wasn't feeling that much. I'm like, OK, guys, you know, you kind of nearly had an original film to me in a sense. But in the end, you did kind of go to those romantic comedy tropes, but it's not that big a deal. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of Crazy Rich Asians. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.